Well, howdy do, boys and girls. I've got a very important question to ask you. What do we call the dance that I'm doing with my feet in all my videos? Now, if you're like most Americans, you probably have no idea, but perhaps you're from the South and you answered clogging. That's pretty close. I'll give you a little bit of credit because I am doing a few clogging moves every now and then, but mostly we call this dance book dancing. Has anybody ever heard of buck dancing? If you're like most Americans or even most folks around the world, your answer is no, which is pretty weird for me because I'm the national buck dancing champion. It's pretty awkward being the national champion of something that nobody's ever heard of, but that's okay because I'm gonna teach y'all all about buck dancing in my new buck dancing series over the next few weeks because the National Buck Dancing Championship competition is coming up in a few months and I gotta get y'all ready because guess who's judging? And don't worry, if you can't make your way to Middle Tennessee to compete, no worries. You can compete virtually because we are having an online category. All you have to do is take a little video of your dancing and send it in to compete virtually. So without further ado, let's get started with today's video and you can look forward to more videos over the course of the next few weeks and hopefully you'll be an expert of the buck dancing by the end of the series. Good luck and I hope y'all enjoy. Well folks, in today's video, we are going to define the term buck dancing. We're going to look at some of the similarities and differences between buck dancing and some of the other traditional Appalachian style dances, such as clogging and flat foot. Then I'm going to show you all some examples of some different videos of different dancers doing buck dancing and all its variations. So you can kind of get an idea of what buck dancing is. So without further ado, buck dancing is a traditional Appalachian style dance. Now I'm going to assume most of y'all are familiar with clogging. Now clogging and buck dancing are from the same tradition, the Appalachian tradition, only except buck dancing is a lot older and clogging evolved from buck dancing. Now you see those two dances are very similar for that reason, but there's a few key differences. Now if you're familiar with clogging, maybe you've seen a clogging team. Maybe you've seen a bunch of dancers dressed in the same outfits, doing the same dance steps at the same time. That's because clogging is most of the time choreographed. Now these dance steps are gonna be fancy. Those dancers are gonna be kicking their feet around, swinging their feet around, jumping up in the air and clicking their heels together, kicking their legs, because clogging is all about putting on a show. And in clogging, you're gonna do your dance steps in time with the music. However, the dancing does not contribute to the music, not like buck dancing. In buck dancing, it is all about playing the music with your feet. As a buck dancer, you are a musician and your feet are your instrument. It's all about playing that song with your feet. And if you're focused on making a good beat, playing that song, maybe the dancing isn't gonna be as interesting to watch. So if you've seen any of my videos, you'll see that I incorporate both the buck dancing and the clogging. So if you wanna go back and look at some of my videos, watch close and listen for some of the similarities and differences. If I kick my foot up in the air, that's clogging and it's gonna look cool, but it's not gonna sound as good as the buck dancing. Now the buck dancing, I'm gonna be creating a good solid rhythm, good solid percussive foundation for my fiddle music to set on. And it's gonna sound cool, but it's not gonna look as good as the clogging. The buck dancing is gonna be a little bit more boring. There's a few other key differences. You know, the clogging is gonna be choreographed. Buck dancing is always improvised. Clogging is often done on a team. Buck dancing is always an individual dance. Clogging is formalized, standardized. There's like, you can take clogging classes and you can learn all the dance steps that cloggers do because there's a standard way of clogging. Whereas buck dancing, you can't take a buck dancing class. Although I'm gonna get you started with a few buck dancing moves. You see each unique buck dancer has their own unique style and their own unique set of moves and their own unique way of putting all these moves together. 
And I learned by watching my mentor, Thomas Maupin, he encouraged me to develop my own style, but he did not show me any moves. Now he, he told me I need to try doing my, my feet this way, or he'll tell me to like tap different ways, but he didn't show me like the steps like you would learn in a dance class. He taught me all these abstract concepts and ideas about how to take that unique thing that's inside of me and letting it out through my feet in a unique way that's gonna you know, be different than you know the next dancer who's gonna come up with their own dance in a different way. So um, it's a very awesome the way that my mentor explains it and it sounds dumb the way I'm saying it because I just can't explain it like he can. I'll have to get you guys a video of him explaining it because it's very beautiful. All right, so there is special footwear that I use for my buck dancing. I use these boots, they don't have taps. Um, however, most buck dancers use tap shoes. I started on tap shoes and the reason why I switched to boots is because I started street performing back a few years ago when I put the fiddling and the dancing together and I decided I needed to look cool. I needed to look like a cowgirl and these just look more cowgirl-ish than these. So I started buck dancing in these and at first my buck dancing wasn't as good. It was a little bit awkward with these boots, but I kind of developed my buck dancing style to kind of fit the boots. I kind of dance on my heels a little bit more now um, than most buck dancers. And if I do put on a pair of tap shoes, I will dance a little bit different because these, the heels aren't as heavy as these. Um, Others will use these type shoes with jangling heels. Um, it's very important to note <laughs> I'm getting choked up. It's very important to note that there are different definitions for clogging and buck dancing. Um, depending on where you're from or how you learn to dance, you might have a different definition for what buck dancing is versus what clogging is. Um, and different regions have different definitions. So what I call buck dancing, um, somebody from North Carolina might call clogging or somebody from Kentucky might call jig dancing. So um, there's that you should be aware of. And I do not agree with the definition that's on Wikipedia. Actually, I don't even agree with my mentor's definition. My mentor has a different definition. So, well, if you're not confused yet, you should be because I'm confused. I am in the national championship. Cha cha blah, 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 blah. I am the national champion and I can't even clearly define this dance. Um, it's not something that you can fit into a nice, neat little box. Anywho, there are competitions around the Southeast and these competitions have rules and definitions for the dances. So at least you can try to, in, in the competition, dance the way that they're looking for. So like in Smithville, Tennessee, um, their definition, the rules for buck dancing are, you must wear taps. So I've competed in these boots and I've been disqualified even though like I was buck dancing their rules are you have to wear taps so there's that um and technically the buck dancing is only six inches off the ground if you lift your feet up more than six inches then you get disqualified whereas in clogging no holds barred you can do whatever you want you can jump up as hot you can cartwheel backflip I've never seen anybody do that but if somebody did that that would be really awesome I challenge y'all to do a backflip in your clogging competition. <laughs> um, but uh, cloggers will kick their feet around and swing their feet around and whatnot. There's no rules about like how high you're allowed to lift your feet up. There's also a third category we haven't addressed yet and it's called flat foot. And in flat footing, I am not gonna even attempt to define flat foot. I'm just gonna show y'all some flat foot videos later. Um, but in the competition, technically you can only lift your feet up three inches off the ground and you can't wear taps. So, um, I can wear my boots in the flat foot competition and in Smithville, I always win the flat foot competition, but I've never even made finals in the buck dancing competition. Go figure. Um, I always thought I was a buck dancer. I've won the national buck dancing championship, but at Smithville, I'm a flat footer. So if you're not confused yet, we're gonna make you more confused. So without further ado, 
that's buck dancing and clogging. And we're gonna show you some examples. I'm gonna start off with a video from the national championships held at Thomas Maupin Festival uh, two years ago. We didn't have the festival last year, but held uh, the national championship held two years ago. And so this is what you can expect to see at this year's competition. And this is what you wanna try to do uh, coming up. These are the three finalists, me included, um, three-way tiebreaker for the winner. some buck dancers who have more of a high energy style. This looks a lot more similar to clogging and maybe some of these buck dancers are actually cloggers who are buck dancing. And that's gonna make some of these different dances overlap even more. And some of these definitions are gonna overlap even more because if you have buck dancers who are clogging or cloggers who are buck dancing, then all these dances are just all mixed together. And, and that's the beauty of these traditional dances. They are all intertwined in the tradition. So um, for the purposes of competing though, uh, we still have the six inch rule for buck dancers and then a no hold bar, no holds barred for the cloggers. I used to get so mad when I was growing up competing against these cloggers. You know, I was competing, I was a buck dancer and I was sticking strictly to the tradition, but I was competing against all these cloggers who would enter the buck dancing category and they would just clog but within that six inch rule, not lifting their feet up more than six inches. And I used to always lose to them. And I would get so mad because I'm like, man, I'm a real buck dancer and I'm really buck dancing. All these cloggers are not true to the tradition, but uh, that's okay because now I am judging the national buck dancing championship and I can make sure that there are no cloggers winning the national championship unless they are truly bug dancing and based in that bug dancing tradition. So uh, also we have two other judges um, from different regions around the country. So um, they will be judging based on their own uh, definitions. Um, actually, I think one of the judges is in the next video. So without further ado. <laughs>
up next, here's some flat footing videos. Um, in the competition, flat footing, you're supposed to keep your feet close to the ground within three inches. Um, if you pick your feet up more than three inches, then you will be disqualified and you're not allowed to wear taps. So if you wear taps, you will be disqualified. So a lot of the dancers are wearing soft soled shoes and they're not making any sounds with their feet. They're just kind of moving and grooving with the music. You keep a nice loose upper body and just, uh, it's very old time, very traditional. I would say it's more of a, like an old timer dance, something you would see more of the, the older dancers like in their 70s, 80s and 90s. So um, the first flat footing video, I'm gonna show you a dancer who is dancing on cornmeal and so he's just like scooting and sliding his feet and the cornmeal and just the sound of scraping his foot with the cornmeal on the floor it's a really cool kind of groove and then he goes into more of like a buck dancing um, on top of the cornmeal which is really cool and then i'll show you a few like old time flat footers and i'm going to show you my mentor um a video where i he didn't know i was videoing him and he was just kind of moving with the music and um, I would call it buck. I would call it flat footing. Um, but remember, different terms, um, different definitions according to where the dancers were born and raised, and how they learned how to dance, and you know what region. Um, so there's different definitions for all these dances. But here's some cool videos to give you a little idea. Um, hopefully. <laughs> So much for watching i hope you learned something i'm gonna wrap it up with one more example one more video this is a tap dancer now this is very interesting because this tap dancer is improvising and he's tap dancing to my fiddle music and it's absolutely amazing but as you know tap dancing is even more standardized and formalized and clogging you see tap dancing is universally known and recognized all around the world you can take tap dancing classes all around the world and there's a standardized formalized set of moves and everybody learns the same moves and it's always choreographed and um yeah so uh before i get to this video i just want to thank you for watching if you're still here if you like what you're watching and you really appreciate it consider sending me some stars y'all i am still beta testing the stars feature here on facebook and if you'd like to support the channel if you'd like to see more content like this um 
feel uh, free to uh, show your support by sending me stars. If you're able to support, I really appreciate it. If not, no worries. I still want you to enjoy this content and I want you to learn something. So uh, without further ado, thank you guys so much and I look forward to next week.